I mentioned before that I was going to do um, an update video on my room, show everything I've done, you know, now that I have the floor done. And it was my intention to do that kind of now. But now that I'm going to be building those new speakers to put over here on the sidewalls, I figure I'll put it off until then. But in the meantime, I wanted to do a short one here showing the improvement you can get, like what you can expect to get realistically. Uh, shown with measurements when you add uh, acoustic panels to a room. Now, I have to say up front that there's a lot more room treatment going on here. Uh, the biggest thing in particular is the ceiling. The entire ceiling is an absorber, so that's going to make a big difference right there. But still and all, by strategically placing uh, acoustic panels that are thick enough, that's the the key right there they have to be thick enough you're not going to get anything done with thin panels it's simply not going to work there's no magic that can be endowed in the material to make it work if it's too thin okay it has to be thick and mine use five and a half inch thick rock wool and i think that's the minimum they should be so when i did my floor i took these panels out and before I did the floor. I did some measurements to show what the room looked like uh, with the carpet down and without those panels in place. And nothing else changed. Like the ceiling's still the same. Everything's the same. The only difference in the measurements that I'm going to show is that uh, the first ones have carpet on the floor, very thin peel and stick carpet tiles, and also don't have these panels in place, these panels that I have on the sidewalls. And the first measurement I want to show is the impulse response for that room as described. No panels on the walls with the carpet on the floor. And you can see, well, you have to be a little bit familiar with this, but I'm going to walk you through it. You can see that it's uh, it starts off with a big thing and then it goes to squiggly lines down. And in particular, what you can see with this measurement are the reflections. They're those sharp peaks. You can see there's one at 4.2 milliseconds, another one at 8 milliseconds. And then there's a bunch of other smaller peaks beside, right beside that uh, before 10 milliseconds. And then there's another one at... 12 milliseconds and you go up even further is one at 18 milliseconds, but we're not going to worry about that. Okay. So that's the room with the carpet without the panels in place. And this one is with the floor done and those panels put in place. And if I switch back and forth between the two, you can see that the before is quite a lot more jagged than the after. And we don't have as many of those peaks that are reflections. So that is pretty definitive right there. There's quite a difference between the two, the before and the after. Even though I put a hard floor in here, it's a lot better. It's a lot smoother. Now I'm going to show the frequency response of each room next. The first one here is with no panels and the carpet on the floor. So this is the before. And the next one is with the panels in place and the floor. And if I switch back and forth between the two, you can see that there's not much of a difference. The only difference, and this was a mistake on my part, is from 3K and up. On that first measurement, I had the tweeter turned down because I had those uh, side firing tweeters in place and therefore I had to turn the output of the tweeter down to get the right level. But that's the only difference right there. So like I said, if I switch back and forth or here, I can overlay the two. You can see that they're nearly identical. And the only real difference there is above 3K. So another one that guys like to look at is the waterfall. And here it is without the panels in place and the carpet on the floor. And in particular, you want to look in the range from around 500 up to 4K and compare it to the room after with the panels in place and the floor done the hardwood floor, and look how even it is from 500 up to 4K. And we'll go back and compare it to before and after. Before and after. Another way to look at these reflections in a graphic format that I just started using 
is the spectrogram in RAW. And I've got it set from 100 hertz up to 5000 hertz, and that's along the bottom. And along the left side is the time scale from 0 to 70 milliseconds. And this is the room before without the panels and the carpet. You can see all those clouds. It looks like throughout the middle of the picture there. Those are all reflections. And if we switch to the after, you can see how much it clears up. It's a lot cleaner. And to put it a bit more into perspective, this next one that you're looking at here is actually from the room when I started. And you can see that there's way more reflections in that room. And that's what the typical untreated room is going to look like. That's around this size. This is 14 by 14. Here's the impulse response to that measurement as well. And you can see the radical difference and also the waterfall plot. If you're old enough to remember over the air reception and standard definition TV, where you get all kinds of static and snow in your picture, <laughs> and you compare that to what we have today with 4K or even 8K screens and crystal clear video that you're getting there, this is the difference that you're getting between a room that's a complete mess acoustically and something that's coming close to that 4K screen. So that's the difference that you can make with just four panels if you put them in the right place. Now, how you put them in the right place is you sit in your listening position. Uh, it helps if you have the panel to stand up approximately how far from the wall it should be. Uh, whenever possible, you want to space these panels away from the wall by uh, no more than the thickness that they are. So my panels are six inches deep or five and a half inches deep. They shouldn't be any more than five and a half inches away from the wall. A little less is okay. A little bit more is okay as well, but really doesn't make sense to come out any further than that five and a half. So the best thing is to put the panels in place and then put a mirror in front of it up against the face of the panel. You'll want to position them so that you can see both speakers like I've got two panels here. The one that's more forward is for the left speaker on this side over here. And the one that's a little bit behind it is for the right speaker on that wall over there. Same on the other wall. The first panel is for this uh, right speaker. The second panel is for the left hand speaker. And if you set the mirror up, you should be able to see. And that'll tell you exactly where to put the panels.